I remember in my adolescence watching the Olympic Games and being completely fascinated by the elegance and skill of the equestrian sport. Unfortunately, I never really associated this sport or anything relating to horse culture in general with Afro-descended people, simply because I didn't see us represented. Only recently has our community been highlighting the history of African-American cowboys. However, popular culture still seems to advance an image outside of that reality. Thankfully today, due to my own research, I now know that Africa has an extensive history with horse breeding, training, and even equestrian mastery. Moreover, not only were some Africans experts in horse culture, but their expertise was sought after in the ancient world. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our black truth is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can download the app at Google Play or the App Store, and you can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. Links to everything in the description box below. Before we begin, it's important to note that we still have a long way to go when it comes to learning about the topic of what I'll call horse culture in Africa. For the purposes of this video, horse culture will simply be defined as equestrian skill, horse breeding, and horse training expertise. When it comes to horse culture in Africa, we don't really know much. However, despite the lack of comprehensive knowledge, it's still very clear that ancient and medieval Africans, primarily from the Nubian region, bred and trained horses that went on to be highly desirable in other parts of the world. Just briefly, I wanted to stress how important this information may be for the diaspora because some of us didn't grow up in a culture that normalized our agency in horse culture. It was usually internalized as something wealthy people did, or perhaps something that the Greeks and Romans invented or popularized. Of course, there's various reasons for the lack, but I think this information can have an impact on not only how we in the diaspora view horse culture, but also help us in realizing Africa's place in its history and development. So let's begin. Perhaps the very first documented sign concerning the relationship between Africans and horse culture comes from one of the greatest conqueror kings in Africa. His name was King Payanki of Kush. I find it so interesting that we have the opportunity to hit two birds with one stone in a sense, because we not only learn a little about horse culture from this king, but also a little about his personality. When King Payanki conquered Egypt around 747 BC, he encountered the stable of one of his newly acquired vassals and discovered that the stable and the horses were in poor condition. The horses were apparently allowed to starve during his siege of the city and he was infuriated and pained by witnessing this. Here's what King Payanki had to say. His majesty then proceeded to the stable of the horses and the quarters of the foals. When he saw that they were starved, he said, as I live, as Ray loves me, as my nose is rejuvenated with life, how much more painful it is in my heart that my horses have been starved than any other crime that you have committed at your discretion. This was not only one of the first documented signs of horse culture in Africa, but it was among the first in the world. The fact that he took the time to tell us this says a lot about horse culture in Africa. It's clear that King Payanki had a great admiration for horses. He had them depicted on top of his victory stella at Napata and on reliefs on the walls of his temple. But what's even more telling is how he initiated the custom of burying a team of horses in a cemetery near his tomb. This tradition was later upheld by three of his successors. It's clear that in ancient times, the Kushites loved horses and contributed to the advancement of world horse culture. 
We'll talk about that a little later. So when did Africans become recognized as being experts in horse culture? Well, the first indication of world recognition was the relationship between ancient Kush and Assyria. By the late 8th century BC, the Assyrians had also developed a deep appreciation for horses. Calvary and chariotry forces became a primary focus for their empire building strategy. But for whatever reason, they decided to outsource and Kush became one of the nations fulfilling their military needs. The late 8th century was a time when the Assyrians were increasingly aware of the importance of equestrian technology. Suddenly, during that period, cavalry in particular developed into a newly powerful weapon of war. Innovation in the form of breeds of horses, methods of harnessing and of importing foreign experts, in particular from Nubia and Samaria for chariotry, from Uratu for cavalry, contributed to that development. Several documents mention Kushite horse experts living in Assyria. Dali cites a Neo-Assyrian text mentioning a Kushite holding the high military office of chariot driver of the prefect of the land. Outside of horse culture, Kushites did live and work in Assyria as surprising as that may sound. An economic document from Assyria mentions Kushite eunuchs collecting debts, and 15 Kushite women included on a list of foreign workers that consisted of musicians, temple personnel, scribes, smiths, stone workers, a barber, and a baker. One of the most significant aspects of Assyrian demand for equestrian technology, if you will, is an Assyrian text mentioning a Kushite official who was thought to have been involved in the supply of horses for the Assyrian army. Virtually all the chariot horses mentioned in the documents known as the Nineveh horse reports are designated as Kushite. As it concerns Kushite horse breeds, this tradition seems to have extended back into the early first millennium BC when the Kushites also bred and trained horses which Assyrian chariot forces used to subjugate Western Asia for more than a century. So based on this evidence, it seems as though it's not a question of whether Africans did or didn't contribute to horse culture impacting the very fabric of the ancient world, but it's simply a question of to what degree did they make history. Africans were at the very core of equestrian technology in the ancient world especially because they were among the first to be mentioned as experts within the genre. And thus, it deserves time and attention in the world historical narrative. In the so-called classical times, there is evidence that demonstrates Africa's contribution to world horse culture. Evidence for the association of black Africans, perhaps Nubians, with the care and handling of horses extends both back in the late second millennium BC and forward into later times. During the Greek and Roman periods, Africans were frequently represented as grooms, charioteers, or riders. Not only did Africans breed and train horses, but their ability on the horse itself has been noted and observed. One example of equestrian techniques and mastery comes all the way from West Africa amongst the Jolof people of Senegal. Around the 14th and 15th centuries, Jolof horses were so well trained that they followed their owners around like dogs. The riders performed tricks and feats of equestrian skill such as leaping on and off galloping horses and retrieving lances from the ground without dismounting, clicking their heels together from the back of a charging mount, or reaching from horseback to erase the horse's hoof prints with their shields. The talent of these African horsemen no doubt would have been a sight to see. Moreover, the African contribution to horse culture is undeniably ancient and worthy of considerable reference and attention in conversations centered on horses. When man first mounted a horse, that event single-handedly changed human history and Africans were at the forefront of that. I'm hoping that in the minds of Afro-descended people, we can envision the African agency of horse culture 
and its legitimate place in the advancement of human civilization itself. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.